You don't think it's going to turn out contributing to GHC. This is your chance. Yeah, I think uh, some topics have been changed. I guess we have a room packed of people who really want to get started hacking on GHC. And you saw it was many people what you do, so it's really not a big deal. Uh, you just have to get started. So this is what my talk is about. I just want to think it's something you just have to do. It's not something you have to learn. Um, but what I'm going to do is just show you how to get started with GHC. Not with the source code, but rather with everything around it. Um, yeah, so where do you start? You need something to, to work on, fix. So either you have some idea, you find a, bug, a ticket in the bug tracker, or you just look in the um, tracker and find a bug that you want to fix. So I've chosen this task that uh, relates to something Simon M said. Um, it's very simple, and don't, don't care what, what it actually is. But anyway, I want to work on this. So the first thing I might want to do is simply to say, well, I'm going to work on this. So I can um, assign it to myself. Maybe say something like, "Yeah, yeah I'll do that now." <laughs> um, and then you do that, and then other people know that um, you're working on it. Then the next thing you have to do is you have to actually get the source code. Now, um, it used to be the case that GHC had a very weird setup of internal packages being pulled in and a custom sync all script that pulled stuff. You don't need it anymore if you are. Basically, it's just a git flow and um, git has pulled it and it's so simple you can even remember it, mostly. Um, well, it is sub-modules, um, these external things. So this means it's still not much simpler than before, but at least it's standard tools. So once you know about sub-modules and, and git, and you can find information about that outside the community, so you just look at the exchange if you're getting stuck. Um, that's why you have to pass your cursor here. Um, and to avoid downloading everything, I just add a reference there. You can it now. Um, and that gives you a fully uh, <coughs> GHC source code um, everything you need. So what is downloading? Back uh, like for your visual memory. Let's put the mind there again. This is what you need to do to get the source. And uh, if you come back the next day, you might want to run this command to make sure you get the latest source you can there. Um, also, if you, this is not all you need to know about Git to work, so there's more on the on the wiki that's part of the bug checker that you've seen. <coughs> there's extensive documentation how to use Git, how to use tech, work effectively with sub, sub modules, and some special issues with like yeah, um, problems with like sub modules. And you need to put the name sub module in a commit message if you want to change sub module, otherwise, the commit will be rejected. Um, these things you can find on Wiki. And I think I've just walked long enough so that this is checked out. Yes. Mm. So let's uh, work on this bug. Cheese sheet here. Mm. So this is a very simple fix. I just have to remove code. <laughs> um, so we don't want this anymore. Simon said that's okay. This anymore. You see, simplifying code is always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want this anymore. <coughs> okay, I think that's it. Okay, let's get diff to see what, what I did. I removed a lot of stuff. Looks okay. Um, just to keep my things in order, <coughs> I create a local branch. And my naming convention is usually work in progress slash pop. Oh. Is it a <coughs> here? Mm -hmm. Probably not. i something like this. Mm -hmm. it's like better for those who have people in front of them. Um, so my naming convention is work in process and a ticket number, <coughs> and then I commit. I don't give it a good commit message. Um, you will later see why. Okay. <coughs> now I have a commit, uh, but I'm, I'm a beginning contributor. I might not be. Oh, I don't have git commit access anyway. But I also want to have code review from the other people. And we have a new tool for that. It's called Fabricator. It's quite a huge online thing that does lots of things. It's written in, I think, something called um, powerful Haskell-like lang programming language. That <laughs> 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 must be good. And I think it's um, originated in Facebook. I don't really know much about it. Um, I just know how to use it ba in basic ways, so I'm going to do that. So it comes with a command line tool called the Arcanist. Um, it's Arc. And um, 
you have to set it up first. It's described in the wiki how to set up. But once you set it up, it's just a simple command, arclif, that'll fetch your changes and push them to this code reader tool. It'll ask me um, relative to what I want to um, push my changes or relative to what was there before. And then I get to describe my changes. And this is now actually what, <coughs> what will eventually be part of the commit message that enters the GHG main lane, main line. So I think I could do a bit better. Of it. So um, do not let's see what is it again. Um, do not use this for test. <coughs> So the, oh, this is a summary, I guess. Um, test plan is something that re recommends you to give hints to the reviewer how to test these things. In this case, it's just uh, oh, I guess it shouldn't be a formal here. Run the test. Mm -hmm. It's often simple. Mm -hmm. Reviews is where you can get specific people notified about your changes. So if you know <coughs> anyone else might be interested, then you just want to make sure he's being told about your changes. <coughs> Um, generally, you always put Austin there because Austin seems to want to look at everything. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the <laughs> We don't know whether you ask him to be or not. Okay, <laughs> the Vicky says we should. out of blocks everything. It's, it's also. <laughs> okay, but the Vicky says you should put Austin there, so. <laughs> well, if you want, this is how you do it anyway. Okay. Uh, because he wants to sell, for someone. I guess it doesn't matter if you forget it. So, what is that name? That's not an email address. It's a login name, it's a track login. It's the same yeah, name as on track with the exception of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> because he's called Thought Police on Trek, and everybody else has the same name as in Trek as in um, Fabricator. That's not enforced. Okay. I guess everybody who's. Exactly. You want to troll people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't troll people. Um, we can link to GHG Trek so you can see that there are certain GHG specific exceptions to Fabricator. Um, yeah, and if I do that. Oh, yeah. Something that I got wrong the first time, don't put it in new line, otherwise it's a comment. Um, it's an un untamed language, this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> these descriptions. So put it in the same line. And uh, once you do that, it'll do it'll check your code for obvious violations of styles, just a very limited way. Um, it doesn't run test suite, and eventually it creates a new fabricator with differential revision. And this is here. Oh, yeah, I got the number 200, that's nice. Um, so what this does, it puts your changes on this web page, and you see what you expect here. You would have a, a diff of the changes, red, but it's okay in this mm -hmm. case. And you can comment on stuff. If you were to wait for a little while, you would also see a auto builder report on this ticket um, about whether your commit has built and validated successfully. So if one pilot would run the test suite, it would tell you about breakage. So you, you can now be lazy and not do it yourself. You just push it there. Wait for the report to come, and then you set your you know, don't heat your room in the center. What it doesn't do automatically, well, what it also, yeah, what it doesn't do automatically is link back to the track ticket. So we have a link here to the ticket, uh, but it doesn't link back. So we still are manually we um, encourage to to put a link to this. I can you see I, you can see I practice. Mm -hmm. um, you can put a link back to this different version in the back ticket, so that there's a special field for it. Yes, it's part of the metadata of your ticket. They can also make now um, change the status to please review, so that people will find this as well. something that they can review. Directly. To search for things to review on, on track. Okay, so now we get code review, so we have to assume people now look at those diffs and one of the usual things that happens if you submit a patch um, is that Simon Ben Jones will tell you to put in more comments. <laughs> um, and usually he's right. So let's do this. Because I'm, I mean, I changed this, <coughs> who knows who else comes along and thinks, okay, we want to have these test cases there as well, and you might not know the reasons why I removed them. So, got something. Um, you put a small comment there that explains about this <coughs> and special things about, about this file, and we add a, add a link to the add a, add a mention the ticket number in your comment. Oh, yeah, right, now that I know it. Um, there you go. 
Yeah, you see, no, even if you have comments, um, Simon Payton Jones will still tell you. <laughs> that, that's probably the reason why we have a 25 year old project that we can now still work on. And, 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 and. So, yeah, it's, it's a very healthy thing. It's a very good thing. It's always been my match. I haven't So, again, a new commit, um, just for me locally, basically. Um, this is not a commit that will end up in the main repository. And then uh, this, just run like this again, it will detect that you have already, that you are already working on a feature branch or something, and um, ask for a comment, and it will update this fabricator differential revision that we have. Close. Quick question. Yeah. If I, if I yeah. may hook in just, yeah, please just quickly here, if I do this like three weeks later and ten more people have changed code, is it going to be our diff and just that? Well, since you're working on a feature branch, um, nobody was changing so the feature. I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not merging the main line until this is done. Or I guess it's up to you. I guess you could merge the main line and then run Arctiv again, and probably would show up here as a change to a change to the diff. So you see that there are <coughs> several revisions of this proposed change. Um, I must admit, I haven't used this tool too much yet. So I'm not showing you much less than I know about it. Yeah, you can rebase if you want to, but you don't have to. But it, it's going to work just by active after rebasing. Because rebase is a lot of things. But rebase will open. If you want to update the bit from fabricating, you can start the application. Yes, okay. Okay, so you now have several versions of this stuff, and the reviewers can change and look at the differences among them. And you obviously have to see that it's so let's assume someone comes along and says, okay, this is okay. Usually Austin will say, looks good to me, um, approves. Then if you have commit rights, you can actually land the change. Uh, that's a, the command is called arc land. And it doesn't really require any, um, any interaction. Besides, it was not accepted. So um, yeah, because I mean, Austin seems to be not here. We'll do something. <laughs> He's two seconds, so um, yeah, let's just override this. Um, It'll also tell me that there's a build running at the moment that it hasn't finished yet. Usually you would wait for that. I don't think we want to wait for that. That's part of the plan. So I'll just do not wait for the build. Um, and I'm now live pushing to GG. I didn't know that. I, I practiced this patch. Like, if you look at the Git repository, you will see the patch two days ago, and then I revert, and then yesterday, and then I revert. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope I practice it well enough to not make, make a mistake by the statue. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did you test on Windows yet? Uh, no. Well, we have Simon Payton Jones as a build button on Windows. breaks and then... The situation, a, a, a post I'm seeking to yield up <laughs> to a machine. <laughs> right. So here's a, yeah, yeah. So which, which build Bob is running at now? Harbour Master, which is integrated into Fabricator. How many machines are we putting out? <laughs> I don't know. I guess Austin would be the one to tell us that. I think it's probably just one strong virtual machine somewhere. And why did the commit message on the uh, first of those dips not appear on the application? Only the second? Um, I don't know. Probably because what they make in the first one, you also give the actual description. So that seems to be the more useful thing is. You have to uh, scroll down to the list of commits associated with the revision. So yeah, but, but even then, there's no description here. No, further down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. summary. Um, but, even, but even then, this is uh, the description, not, not the, commit, the description uh, the description of the div, not the description of the git commit. Um, Fabricator is not tailored around git. You have to keep that in mind. It it's also works with subversion, so there's some abstraction there. And it doesn't always feel right with Git. Quite right, so that's okay. So how would normally just amend the original commit instead of being on the new commit? Yeah, it would be the same thing to, to fabricate I guess. Well then you would just see the one commit one. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what happens when you land them. You're gonna land both of them? No, oh yeah, that's a, a need to express it. If you land it, I think I went this way. Right. If you land it, it squashes your future branch. Yeah, and it so squashes the messages as well. So well, it uses the, it uses the um, message from the description of the. If you want to preserve, if you want to use the pad workflow, preserve sort of some chunkiness to your commits, 
you land multiple revisions for different subsets of your overall patch. Okay, it's a powerful tool. Um, I don't know all about it yet. But, but, yeah, just being a rough yes? What if you don't have commit clients or push clients? Right, then you would just wait for Austin to do it. Hmm. <laughs> From yeah. yeah. So once you have the fabricator and accept that you can expect someone else to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the fabricator's default is to yeah, merge all your patches into one big one. Do you prefer to have to land a series of patches because you know that's the one you split them out as well as you want to work? You, you just again you push it to a working branch, a working progress branch like you did. But then you just tell Austin, Austin, could you not land a fabricator patch? Could you do that one? Yeah. So just just ask Austin. He's very helpful. He'll, Anyway, Fabricator is optional. You can just submit a patch as a, like you know, old style 20th century div to the git uh, to the track ticket, and people will still look at it. So it's not like. But Arc is easier. Hmm? Arc makes it so much helps a lot. Depends on the size. Of it. Um, okay, so here's the, the takeaway for this um, simple commands. Remember that at least by default, your commits are being squashed, and it's the description of the revision that ends up in the git um, commit log. And we have a very good track pic, um, wiki page on that. It has lots of screenshots. Um, and it's, it's very yeah, good. So I'm not quite done yet. Um, if we look at the ticket and reload, we will see that um, it also mentioned that now there's a commit in the main repository, but it hasn't been closed. So we still have to manually close the ticket. So we still have to resolve it as fixed um, manually. Which makes sense in case you have several commits um, reaching that there. All right, so this was a very uh, brief tour around uh, fixing some a real bug in CHC live. Um, these are the steps I, I, um, I took. And these are the steps you can roughly follow. But as you see, it's, it's really nothing very uh, difficult about. Just have to get started doing it. Okay, so what else is there? Um, I have a few more minutes, so I'll show you a few other tools um, that you might want to know. But first of all, besides actual hacking, or maybe more so, it's important to communicate. So talk to people about your ideas, get feedback, um, discuss problems, get help if you get stuck, don't get frustrated on your own. Um, so we have uh, various ways of communication. There's a developer mailing list. That um, you're free to join. <coughs> you don't have to be a official developer as if there was such a thing to be there. And you can also just look and see what's happening. So you can brag to your friends what you know about what's happening in the next GHG release. There's an IRC channel, um, which is helpful and often meant. And then usually the actual decide about features happens on, on, on the track wiki pages, also the track tickets. And then code review happens in Fabricator in the comments there. So that Places that you can look for, for things to happen, and well, I guess ICSP is also a place to communicate about GFC, but don't, don't just wait for one year to talk about your ideas. Um, that I've <coughs> briefly mentioned Power Master, which is running as part of Fabricator, it's validating every commit that enters the repository, but also every diff that's being proposed, and they can see whether things break or not, so we get some, um, some feedback here. Fabricator also provides a little tool called Herald. Uh, so assume you're inter interested in a one particular feature of PHG and want to see everything that's happening there. Maybe you want to <coughs> just start reviewing code yourself, which is a very useful thing to do if you, if you don't consider yourself a core, brief, um, <coughs> core contributor. Um, getting feedback is always helpful. So you can set up a trigger that would notify you about changes to certain files, either in the repository or in submitted um, patches in Fabricator. So it's called Herald. Then outside Fabricator, we have uh, a few things. We have a uh, Travis, which is an open source, but it's a, it's a free continuous integration service for open source projects on GitHub. And it's um, continuously checking um, GHC. Unfortunately, GHC is kind of large, so we often break the boundaries, like the resource levels on Travis. So even if there's a red dot here, it does not necessarily mean that it broke. Um, so I keep manual taps on that and see what's breaking and modify people if they broke something. But it's still a place to look for things. Um, it validates everything on master and also on other branches that are being pushed to the GHC repository. 
And if you clone GHG and put into your push them to your own GitHub repository, uh, you basically your own your personal fork, you can also set up Travis to to check it for you. That's convenient. Okay. The other thing that I've been working on, which is not quite great yet, but it's, it's at least going the right direction, is um, is this thing. Um, it's it's running on my desktop PC in my office, and it's validating and benchmarking each commit that enters the main um, mainline of development, and then collects these numbers and tries to get nice graphs out of it. So, uh, oh, I thought I had to put it. Um, so there's a summary. It's a bit noisy because um, you, you do break tests sometimes, and they appear here. But you can also look at individual benchmarks from the nofix nofix suite or also from the test suite and see whether there are regressions and when they are. It's not perfect, it's still running it, it's an experimental URL, but um, I, I hope that this will eventually become a very useful tool to make sure that GHC doesn't accidentally um, break performance. Also, if you have something about performance and you worry about it, um, make a nice NoFit benchmark out of it and submit it, so that NoFit um, actually tests code written in this century. <laughs> um, that would be appreciated. And yeah, it really would. I guess another, another task is just to become a to, to, to uh, uh, do something about NoFit, just you know, to, to be somebody who collects new benchmarks for NoFit and iBenchmark, because they're all very, very old. Yeah. What was the last? Uh, it was like five or ten years since the last NoFit. <coughs> I, I, I think a few micro benchmarks were added previously. Yeah, but that's an, another really helpful task would be to do that. <laughs> While you run the benchmarks, do you collect average information? No. That, that um, you can do that <laughs> separately. <laughs> Coverage requires a APC. Okay, there's change. I don't want to leave me find the la last thing when we added something. Um, 2013. Okay, not too bad. That's it. Okay. Well, that's the summary. Um, can you do it? It's not hard. You can do it. Um, if you have something that interests you, um, come and talk to us. And, and, and yeah. Okay. Before we all go to lunch, uh, a quick announcement while Jochen is bringing the Internet Workshop page. I put in the titles and names for all these lightning talks. And we would like to ask the speakers if they want to have anything projected uh, here to collect this beforehand on one notebook so we don't have the switch over uh, overhead. And Jeffrey is going to host the first lightning talk session please talk to him about this after lunch yeah right right before the next session come meet with me and we'll organize the lightning talks the first three lightning talks so, so it's only three in the first yeah. session uh, uh,